as you know, earlier this morning on the 456 line, we had a series of incidents. I am happy to report that we have a number of people in custody at this time that we believe are responsible for the incidents. I really want to thank the MTA for their cooperation. This was a team effort in sharp eye uh, police work, and you'll hear some of that from Captain Kenny Gorman in a moment. Also, utilization of the MTA's cameras and immediately getting out pictures of those perpetrators so that this could all come together in a short period of time. I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Inspector Stephen Hill, and he'll outline some of the incidents right now. Thank you, Commissioner. At approximately 4.20 a.m., a male 44 was on a southbound 4 train when three to five male suspects approached him and slashed him on the left side of his cheek. The victim exited the train at the Union Square station. The suspects continued on a southbound train. The second incident was happened about five minutes later as the southbound train approached the Astor uh, Play station. The suspects proceeded to assault two male passengers. One victim, a male 41, was punched in the face causing a laceration, and the other male 40 was slashed with a knife to the face causing a laceration to the nose. The two victims exited the train at the Astor Place station, and the suspects stayed aboard the southbound 4 train. The third incident, approximately five minutes later, the suspects attacked a fourth victim, male 44, boarding a moving train, slashing him across the left cheek. The suspects also took the victim's wallet and cell phone. The victim exited at the Brooklyn Bridge station, and the suspects once again remained on the train as it proceeded southbound. The fourth incident, approximately 30 minutes later, at the Transit District 11, which is located at 161 Street Station at Yankee Stadium, a fifth victim, a male 48, came forth. He informed officers that while in the vicinity of 59th Street and Columbus Circle, a group of males did approach him and proceed to stab him in the right eye with a knife. The victim was removed to an area hospital where he is in stable condition and undergoing surgery. I'll now turn it over to Chief Wilcox to provide details of the investigation. Good afternoon, everybody. Uniform officers from Transit District 4 at Union Square came into contact with the first victim at approximately 4.30 a.m. this morning as the victim exited the train station. The officers, the transit officers immediately transmitted the assault over their department radios which triggered a mobilization for initial additional responding officers and investigators from Manhattan South Night Watch. The investigators immediately began interviewing victims and witnesses. Additionally, and subsequently, the Manhattan Transit Squad, along with the Transit Special Investigation Squad, also began an intense uh, search for uh, Vigorous cameras for additional video footage, including MTA cameras. Shortly thereafter, quality images of the sus suspects were obtained and shared with all officers on patrol in the vicinity of the crime via their NYPD smartphones. At approximately 11.20 this morning, while on patrol along the northbound number one line at 79th Street and Broadway, Captain Kenneth Gorman was the commanding officer of Transit District 1, along with police officer Jeffrey Dela Cruz, observed four individuals who matched the description and the images of the wanted suspects that had been circulated earlier. As the suspects exited the train, they were taken into custody without incident, and they were brought back to Transit District 1. This investigation remains active and ongoing. We are working very closely with prosecutors from uh, the District Attorney's Office in Manhattan to determine possible and pending charges. We are confident that we have the right people in custody at this time. One thing that should be noted, one of the suspects that was taken into custody this morning was also arrested in connection to a very eerily similar nightclub robbery in January of this year and was released on his own recognizance for that crime. So, I want to just take a moment to uh, commend the actions of the uh, very uh, the dedicated officers from District 1 and the commanding officers of District 1 
uh, have the Penny Gorman who use the images that they have while on patrol and see the suspects uh, who put the images and stop them. Very commendable action, which helped bring this uh, to a very, we believe, a very swift closure. So I'm going to introduce Captain Kenny Gorman. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. Uh, early this morning, myself and numerous members of Transit District 1 were involved in a search and investigation of the crimes that were described earlier. At approximately 11.15 hours, myself and Officer De La Cruz went to the northbound one train at 59 Columbus Circle, just below us. We entered the train on a train patrol, at which time we observed four males fitting the description. Upon arriving at the 79th Street station, we stopped the males. We were joined by two of our NCO officers, as well as two of our newly assigned rookies. And at that time, the four males were placed into custody without incident, and we moved back to Transit District 1 for further investigation. Thank you. All right, investigation where we are now. Remember, the investigation is still going on and everything is subject to change. But the descriptions that the, uh, the victims are giving is that it's usually a group between three to four and up to five males. So there might be some mixing and matching going on here. The last incident at, uh, in the Bronx where our victim walks into the transit district weather at about five o'clock this morning, we believe that incident where he's assaulted and seriously injured happens right here at this Columbus Avenue train station, somewhere between what happens at Brooklyn Bridge about 4.30 and 5 o'clock in this morning. Somewhere in that window, we're still investigating to, to, to really iron and, and drill down on when, where the, what time that really happened. Chief, is there a frustration? Everybody's talking about subway violence and applying police as the solution here. Is there any frustration on the part of law enforcement that to acknowledge you, that's not the only way to fix this problem. Uh, for instance, the fact that your suspect there has been arrested for something similar in the past, would you speak to that? Well, I, I'm just gonna speak to the incident that we have right now, and just, you know, it, 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 it was a quickly evolving incident. Uh, I wanna commend all the officers from the initial investment, from the initial officers who were on patrol in transit at, this morning at Union Square, who immediately put over a description. And that initiated a mobilization which really began a whole series of very robust and swift and investigative efforts that brought us to here at this moment. So you just where does everyone understand that it's a little hard to hear the incident that happened today, the one here and the ones in Lower Manhattan are all going to be the same four suspects. So right now, where we are with the investigation, we believe that the four suspects that we have in custody are responsible for all of those incidents. As the investigation continues, uh, we will get in touch with you if we have any need to dis distribute any additional photos. There could be somebody else involved. Was there, was there a way that the victims described these suspects working together, like one doing the slash and another? We're hearing stories like that. So, in each incident, there are some differences where some victims were assaulted. And in, in one incident, it was definitely a, a initiated as a robbery, and then it led to a slashing. But in each, the victims describe anywhere, sometimes two to three to four, upwards of five males. So it looks like they were mixing, uh, pairing off, mixing off, as the train was moving down along the four lines this morning. Were they wearing white masks? Some of the video we have, uh, they were wearing uh, masks similar to this, facial masks. Okay. Were they white or? They were, they were basically white uh, surgical type masks. All right, two more questions. Hey, Commissioner, the mayor says the subways are safe, the MTA says they need more officers on the subways and mental health counselors. Yep. Well, the subways safe. Well, look at this way. It's a curious spot to have a press conference today with all the activity, but look at the activity. You, you have Central Park, you have people skateboarding, you have music being played. I mean, this is what makes New York City safe. Uh, great. When you look at an incident like this, what I'm thinking about as I'm listening to everyone talk, 
Here you have the amount of damage that can be done in, in a half hour just by just a couple people. That's where our concentration is, that small number of people that commit these crimes, and it's incumbent upon us with all of our partners to really eradicate it. Should have, should have yeah. about, they've asked for extra cops. And just talk about, in that arrest, those are the extra cops that they asked for, right? It's the, the rookie, 80 rookie cops who've been put in the subway. It's, it's that mixture that, that was been a major part of the arrest. Well, I think uh, really the, the major part is uh, leadership from the frontier. Great job by Captain Gorman with his team. I mean, really phenomenal. I mean, when I when I heard about this overnight, was getting briefed this morning. Obviously, I had conversations with uh, Robbie Harris and Kathy O'Reilly. What were, what were we doing? We barely had time to initiate the plan, and, and I couldn't believe it that they caught him that quick. So I, I really got to commend the people from Transit District One. To the deployment question, I mean, certainly it's a combination of, you know, yesterday we put over, yesterday we put over 600 extra combination of police officers deployed, uh, overtime police officers deployed, auxiliary officers deployed. So that's, that's the positive news. We're getting feedback that some people are seeing extra cops all over the city. But you have one of these incidents, it's too much, and that's where our, uh, you know, that's where the effort is right now that we're trying to push back on that. Commissioner, last one. To that last point, one. to that point, my colleague, E.J. Brunhill, said that he wrote the subway system today, four boroughs, eight different subway lines, and it was two hours before he spotted any NYPD officers, uh, either riding the trains or patrolling the bike. And he said the people that he talked to, it was the same way. Uh, is it that we're not seeing the officers? Or is it that the numbers aren't there? Well, it's, it's probably a combination. And then, then we, what we want you to be is safe and feel safe. So we want that visible presence. I know that's incumbent upon Kathy when she puts some of her traditional plainclothes people in uniform. That's why we're putting people at the highest travel, travel stations with auxiliary officers. All of these things kind of come together. But if somebody rides for hours and doesn't see someone, then we, then we have more to do, obviously.